Chinese debt pushed Sri Lanka into this crisis. Now, Central Asia could be the next victim of China's debt trap. One of the major borrowers is Kyrgyzstan. It has borrowed close to $2 billion from China. There are growing concerns over Kyrgyzstan's ability to pay back these Chinese loans. Is Kyrgyzstan caught in a Chinese debt trap? Is Chinese debt dictating the foreign policy of the Central Asian country? Will it take a stand against the persecution of Uyghurs? Today, we pose these questions to Jumat Othorbayev, the former Prime Minister of Kyrgyzstan. Here's an excerpt from that conversation. Mr. Othorbayev, welcome to Vion. Welcome. You also share a border with Xinjiang, uh, the region where China has been accused of persecuting more than one million Uyghur Muslims. According to some estimates, there are around 50,000 Uyghurs in Kyrgyzstan. Do you believe the genocide of Uyghurs in China poses a security challenge in your country? First of all, uh, we all, all five Central Asian countries, maintain excellent relationship with China. No problem. No problem. We demarcated and delimited the borders. We have big Chinese investors in all our five countries, very good political relationships. And we trust through the Chinese government on the terms of what they're saying. The words which you're using, they are not really uh, lined up with that. We trust that the Chinese government is responsible and a uh, very trustful partner, and we believe to that. Uh, I know, of course, there is a kind of new Cold War between the United States and China, and each and the uh, U.S. using a uh, different type of uh, propaganda weapons, including those statements which you just mentioned. I did not even mention the United States. I was talking about the Uyghurs, both in China and in your country. And I was asking, do you believe that what's happening in Xinjiang poses a security challenge to Kyrgyzstan? There is no, no challenge, no security challenge. China is a, they, they are a very strong state, state institutions. I have been in Urumqi, in the capital of Xinjiang, Uyghur Autonomous Region, many, many times. I communicate with everybody. I didn't see anything what the U.S. is claiming happened there. I've seen your previous interviews where you said that all is well in Xinjiang, that there is remarkable development, and uh, you seem to have a very different picture, a very different perception of this region uh, than the rest of the world, including the United States, the U.K., Australia, New Zealand, Canada, who are all boycotting the Beijing Winter Olympics over China's human rights abuses. Uh, but if we were to go by your assessment, sir, on how things are in Xinjiang at the moment, why do you think China is blocking moves by the United Nations Human Rights Office to investigate these claims of genocide? Why is China not giving the world access to Xinjiang? Yeah, China is a big country. It's the second economy of the world. They have their own priorities in internal and external politics. Uh, if they don't trust the uh, to whatever mission anybody wanted to send, they have all rights to refuse it. Huh? And uh, what I know, there is a fight in mass media between Chinese and uh, Western propaganda. They are not part of this uh, mass media fight. What we know that we, uh, we are in good, very good terms with China, uh, a very important uh, trade and investment partner for our region. We maintain very predictable and stable relationship with them, and we trust to the government of China what they will, what they're claiming. Uh, you talk about trust. You talk about the relationship that Kyrgyzstan has with China, uh, and that's uh, another uh, point that has been uh, raised as a concern in the headlines: Chinese debt. Kyrgyzstan owes around $5 billion in foreign debt, and more than 40% of this debt, that is around $1.8 billion, is owed to China. And this is money that was borrowed over the last decade for infrastructure projects under the Belt and Road Initiative. Do you believe that your country is caught in a Chinese debt trap? Now, I know the situation. I know the debt trap. Actually, uh, we start to... Uh, relationship with China much uh, earlier than uh, the Belt Road Initiative has been announced, actually, in Central Asia. So we're really borrowing from China on a very light, easy term, so-called concessional terms. It's kind of all bank IMF borrowing. Uh, we need to, uh, to develop our 
infrastructure, including transport and energy infrastructure. And what China is uh, giving to us, offering to us, is good for us. So we're using this money, not only for my country, but all Central Asian states, in order to improve uh, people's lives. So you say that last year in February, uh, the new Kyrgyz president, Sadir uh, Zhaparov, raised concerns over the high levels of debt. And you're saying that Chinese money is improving the life of people in your country. But this is what uh, the president said, and I'm quoting, if we do not pay some of the debt on time, we will lose many of our properties. China, like I said, is the largest creditor for Kyrgyzstan, and Beijing has been reluctant to grant large-scale loan waivers. Do you still believe that Kyrgyzstan is benefiting from Chinese money and is in a position to meet its debt obligations? Uh, I know what kind of uh, credit agreement is signing with China. There is no obligation to, uh, to, to, to pledge whatever uh, national property are. Uh, of course, we uh, respect our responsibility and obligations. But in terms of overall debt level to GDP, our debt level to GDP is in sustainable level. And we have a law which not allow from my country to have sovereign borrowing above certain line. We are still below that line and we can comfortably borrow again. So our government really looking very carefully about the level of debt which we have in terms of sovereign uh, credits. In that respect, uh, situation is no dangerous, and we are in comfortable situation in terms of continuation of our uh, debt uh, relationships uh, with Chinese. And you can catch the entire interview this Saturday at 9 p.m. IST. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.